up so mediocrely early as I don't know, I was tired as hell this morning. I can only imagine the same for everybody else. It's Yomacon, it's goddamn party time, and it is hard to wake up. It's, it's Saturday, right? Not till the It is? Oh, oh that's right. What, what month is it? <clears throat> so... What were you doing in the Arctic? What were you doing in the Arctic? I don't have a place to live, was your excuse. Look, Green Man, if you must know, I was just trying to find a place where I could be alone for a little bit and have some me time. Turns out, the Arctic wasn't the best solution. Yeah, it would, uh, seem that way. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it would. So what do you do for fun? <laughs> oh, I get it. It's because he's a fish. <laughs> That was, that was improv, by the way. You can blame me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you unaware, this is primarily a Q&A panel, but we do have a few clips to show you. Uh, Kaiser, do we want to lead with anything, or do we want to start with questions? I will defer to you on this one this time. Actually, seeing as we just kind of like let everyone in with a clip, I'm sure there are people who are burning to ask some questions. So that is get... fair enough. We have two microphones hold on, here. Hold on, hold on. Oh. I'm going to say... Five people on both sides. We'll go through those. That is Play very three. hard to, yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll do it five and five. Five and five. All right. If you're further back in line, that just means we'll get you in the next batch. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, so feel free to line up. <laughs> See, you, you, confu you made it confusing. Like, this is something that would happen on our end normally. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that I'm gonna have to sit Fair enough. down. Anyway, we'll uh, start with over here since we started over there last time. Oh, uh, can we get levels on that one? Yeah, keep talking into it so we. Okay. Yep. Okay. There we go. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm a huge fan of puns. Can you please share your favorite puns and your characters' voices? Your favorite characters' voices. Jeez. Favorite puns. I absolutely. Bad puns. If prefer. I despise puns. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, look, 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 look here. <laughs> I hate puns so much that I hate to punish you guys with that. Wow, that was unbearable. <laughs> you're, you're asking me, of all people, to choose my favorite Dude, I pun. know you have a ponderful one. <laughs> Look, at some point during this panel, you'll, you'll hear it, trust me, I assure you. I can't pick it now, but I'll come up with it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Figured it out. I, I did mine. I did nail it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. First off, I just have to say I love that episode 53 had a title shout out to the Temple of Trunks. I was on the old message board way back in 2000. And um, I have a question for Vegeta that All actually right. does not have to do with Napo. Oh, thank God. <laughs> what do you think of Kakarot's current obsession with his new waifu, Sunset Shimmer? What? And the Go Q&A videos. Uh, that's what I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Fair enough. Uh, I had a question. How did you come up with the Goten being punched out of existence? That was, uh, that was just like, it, it was kind of like a spur of the moment in that scripting session where it's like, okay, Goku gets punched in the nuts. We gotta do something with this. Something to follow up Vegeta getting kicked in the dick a thousand times. <laughs> How do we do it? Well, turns out we have some footage from the Boo arc and we uh, decided, you know what, we, we, we were in the middle of casting, like, Teen Gohan, like, you know, Teen Gohan anyway. Yeah. So we were like, ah, may as well bust him out for this one. So, yeah, I was actually really happy to, too. Um, the voice of Gohan in that scene, by the way, is uh, Justin, Justin Reiner. Uh, the voice of Deku in My Hero Academia. Yeah! In cloud of focus in the Yeah! We got him first! Yeah, we did, we did. We found him! Yeah. We made him a star! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we actually don't take questions from furries. <laughs> Hi, question I have, what was the hardest line to say ever for recording? 
Uh, I know mine right off the bat, so I'll just go ahead since I assume everybody else needs to think of one real quick. Uh, the hardest one for me to deliver was Vegeta's line as he was, uh, you know, plotting his escape from Namek. Uh, maybe I could go to Frieza, Frieza Planet 419. Nobody ever goes to Frieza Planet 419. Not since its species miraculously repopulated. Miraculously repopulated is a very hard, like, tongue twistery kind of like, it's, it's unexpectedly hard, but I slurred that so many times. I had to do like, maybe 20 or 30 takes to get it right. Yeah. Um, for me, actually, um, since I started playing Pip Bernadotte in the last episode of Helsing Ultimate, Oh my god, I had an entire paragraph where I was talking about, like, you know, you cannot woo her over with a cheap bottle of wine, you have to subdue her, you, are, you, are, you have to seduce her, and blah 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 blah. You have to subdue her. <laughs> subdue her. <laughs> that damn Pip is on. No, I don't like him no more. <laughs> you know, that, 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 no, that would be Pip, uh, Pip Le Pew? Pip Le Pew. Yeah. <laughs> but, da 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 Puns! <laughs> There it is. Found one. <laughs> um, no, but actually, since I had never done a French accent much before that, I actually had to learn it for that character. And let me tell you, there are there are a lot of things in the English language that just do not work with that French accent when you're trying to like make a monologue. So yeah, that was it. Was probably that long paragraphs like line that I had as Pip in uh, the last episode. Yeah, accents are really hard. These fools made me speak Klingon. <laughs> Was that actually difficult for you? <laughs> it's been so long away from my native planet. Fair enough. <laughs> there was one line I remember that I needed to record. Uh, this was years ago, and it ended up not being used, but <laughs> like later on, like it, it was a line I remember I recorded for, for you, Scott, and there was like, I said it, but I mixed up the words, and it was about like going to like a spaceship or something. I don't know if you remember that. Which character? It was it was like for some nameless characters for the Bardock. Ah, uh, uh, Bardock movie, right? Oh yeah. I remember. Oh yeah, yeah. I do remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I just I twisted it up for some reason. I'm like I didn't realize it. My the dyslexia kicked in. So. God, so there's that. God, I'm trying to remember what it was. You had that clip for the longest time. Please do not talk to me about Bardock. <laughs> <laughs> that, you Bardock at Yompacon. Too many bad memories, man. Yeah, right. Too many bad memories. Uh, I was in, in, New Orleans. In, in 2009, oddly enough, our first Yompacon. Yep. And then it was, uh, we actually premiered Bardock, uh, the, you know, father of Goku. We had to cut that panel in half because they had a panel room that only fit like 50 people. As you can see, I mean, I know we've grown over time, but that was never going to work. No, no. Um, and yeah, actually, the funny thing about that was I had to export Bardock that morning. Yeah. Yeah. I, not, not the last time you've done something like that either. Yeah, I exported that son of a bitch and then I got on a plane. Oh. Hi. Working? Yeah, okay. I have a two part question. Um, so you have plans on doing GT, right? No. <laughs> I knew that one coming up. Um, I just started watching. Dragon Ball Super. What are your thoughts on that, um, as a character-wise, with all the new characters coming in, and as a story plot-wise, up to episode 40 -ish? After, uh, after you get past the movie recaps, which I really think they shouldn't have done, unless it was like literally just to give Toriyama more time to write out some stuff, but I, like, after the movie recap stuff, it's all pretty good. Uh, even the first two episodes are good, because those have nothing to do with the movies either, except for like introducing Beerus into the super universe. Um, but I, I, I've enjoyed everything up until the point where it looks like they're using Goku forgets stuff as a plot element three times within five episodes. And that pissed me off. I'm just like, come on, at least come up with something else. He forgets the sense of being. He forgets the, like, Mafuba pot. No. He forgets the tag. Yeah. At least the Mafuba pot, actually, like, I was fine with that one because, oh, yeah, I'll just leave it in the time machine. Yeah, no, that's that's something that's like, yeah, I don't want to carry that around everywhere except for the fact that they have capsules where you just give it in your goddamn pocket. <laughs> really? That's what, master, that's what, like, freaking Kami does in the freaking world tournament. To be fair, that's Bulma's fault. <laughs> Damn, Bulma. Makes sense, yeah. Bulma, Bulma brought a freaking, uh, she brought a, uh, a shed with her, a, a full, a full warehouse with her. She didn't put the Mafuba in a goddamn capsule. She couldn't have put the Mafuba in the shed, in the capsule. Can you put another capsule inside of a capsule? Bro! Whoa, no, 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 no
Dr. Breen did that once. Dr. Breen did that once, and they are still trying and to. And they created the GT timeline. Yep. <laughs> It's canon now. I, I'm afraid I haven't kept up with Super because I don't watch subs because I'm not a nerd. So I, I guess I'm SOL Shots forever. Fired! <laughs> Yo. This isn't my question, this is just a follow-up. So then the big question is gonna be not when Broly, now it's gonna be when Super. Oh when but, Toei get off our ass. <laughs> So, I had an idea for something to do. Um, it kind of hinges on a couple things. First off, is there a way to contact Chris Zito, like live? I uh, just message him on Twitter. No, no, no. I mean, you. No. Right now. There isn't. Aw. Uh, I mean. Because my, my idea was is that I was going to see if I could have the whole crowd have, you know, call him. You guys could call him in. And then have the whole crowd do a big yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think actually what you should do is have everyone in the crowd DM him a little MP3 of them going yeah, because it'd be a lot more confusing and a lot funnier. <laughs> at, at CC backslash either a kitty face a yeah or whatever the hell you want. Yep. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? So. Do it up. C -C back at CZ backslash. At CZ backslash. And the backslash is spelled out. Yeah. yeah. Backslash. <laughs> and just do ya or kitty face, face or something like that. What's your question, man? Thank you, guys. No problem. Uh, after watching the Super Android 13 movie, what was Goku's first guess for the TH ball? You know what? None of us really know what Goku is thinking. <laughs> it could have been many things. Could have been Tom Haverford, for all I know. But it's Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is a national treasure, I would believe it. Todd Haverford. Tim Hortons. Hortons. There you go. Goku would probably go for that. No, oh my god, that, is it. that, that to me, that is my candidate. Okay. Hi. Um, it almost went that Vegeta's been on the lookout. I can't imagine that... Popo wouldn't have explained the pecking order to him because Vegeta is not one to take not being on top. What would a conversation between Popo and Vegeta be like in which Vegeta gets put in his place? If you recall episode 55, <laughs> the conversation went quite simply. <laughs> there was a punch. Oh, actually, no, what I believe happens is Mr. Popo just walks over to Vegeta, lifts him up, and just hucks him down the lookout. Yeah, it's either, like, it's either that or he literally just drags him over and then punches him down. Either one, I think it's hilarious. I figure he just wills people to just hit the ground at will. Oh, oh I lost a vendor badge, I guess, back here. Let's see. If they're in the crowd, there's a lot of people losing stuff. Somebody by the uh, some, a vendor with the name Armin. Armin. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, well, we got this straight up here when your uh, question is. We're, we'll hold it. Yeah. We'll hold it. Until you're... <laughs> Don't worry. Next up. Um, after I watched you guys at uh, the Nozlock, I'm even thinking, do you think Krillin can beat Ash? Krillin? Yeah. He's not a Pokemon trainer. I don't know how he would. I mean, I, I guess technically, if Krillin were to fight Ash and his entire team of Pokemon, I guess Krillin would win because he has the ability to like eviscerate mountains and stuff. <laughs> but then again, after watching some of that awesome XYZ animation with the uh, Greninja, I don't know. Maybe Krillin might not win. <laughs> First off, you know why he uh. You know why hey, Vegeta, uh, Krillin, Yamcha, and Hercule always lose so badly? I have no idea what you're talking about. They don't know Sakya. Ah, dude, 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 dude that's Dan Hibiki. Dude, can I get an autograph? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I ran out of fo out of photo. It was to sign. Heartbreaking. <laughs> I will take you on as my master, Sensei. <laughs> and as for my question. What is your dream anime? This goes for all of you. What is like? What would you view as like an anime that you you that you would really really want to see? Like your your dream anime. That Anything that I would say here would be stuff I have in development, so I would hold that back. 
There's a few that have uh, that already exist, like Stardust Crusaders and One Punch Man. Those are like yeah, yeah. yeah. those are what I've always wanted. This boss rush and it's great. I love it. Um, an anime with gay characters that aren't just fetishes for women or stereotypes. Good luck. Although, although apparently Yuri on Ice. It's Stevie. Yeah, apparently it's that's like really good. So. Uh, besides that, honestly, um, I don't know. I, I like there, there's actually been some really good stuff coming out lately. I mean, Judges of Our Adventure is covering a lot of bases. Anything by yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, anything by one. Oh my God, Mob Psycho. Mob Psycho. Yeah. My uh, my dream anime would be a continuation of Berserk in the style of the 1997 <laughs> yes. version. Yes. This new show is right. You want a new Berserk show? Okay. <laughs> it is. It is sad. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> it is sad that the video game, the the freaking Dynasty Warriors video game, looks better than the anime. Right. <laughs> it is like it's sad when like so many video games look better than that anime. It kills me. Like I still watched it, but I, the whole time I'm thinking, man, this is not great. I, I couldn't do it. I, I was I was with the Anime News Network reviews, and they're like giving it B's and A minuses, and I'm like, I can't do it. I can't get past how bad it looks. And now the and now they're on a freaking hiatus until spring of any show that does not deserve a hiatus. No, you know, it, well, it's might. berserk. That's just tradition. Are they all playing? Are they all playing the, like the Moe dating Sims now too? Like the entire animation department? It, it is it is very possible that they are actually going back and fixing the problem. Maybe there was. The Lots of things are possible movie. in the mathematical sense. At least we have manga. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cubs win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> How can we went from one to three? Oh, you might you might want yeah, to speak a little more than Mike. I'm trying. Um, my question about the lineup of the DBZ movies that you made. Why didn't it go from one to three, four, five, and then... Actually, we started with three. Yeah. And then uh, we went back and did one and two. Yeah, what, what ended up happening, happening was um, we weren't really thinking much about the movies. Uh, we, we Mostly because back then, um, uh, Vegeta3986, Masako X, and myself uh, had already done movies one and two, which is actually what kind of sprung about Team Four Star a little bit. Yeah, actually, uh, Neighborhood Cluck actually was the uh, proto for uh, TFS. TFS. Um, and since those movies had been done, I, we didn't I, want to redo them so soon. Um, I can't remember, at some point, I think I called you up, or I texted you, and I'm like, dude, Christmas tree. No, that was me. Oh. I called you. Oh, fair enough. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, you were on vacation. You were just like, what the fuck are you doing? Why the fuck are you calling me, Lan? Like, Christmas tree of Mike. You're like, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, Christmas tree of Mike was the best idea of what to do with that movie, personally, I think. And so we started with that one, did four, five, six. And then we and decided one. to do like one, then we did seven, and most recently at the last Yomicon, actually, World's Strongest. Yeah. World's Strongest is my favorite Dragon Ball movie. It's our favorite Dragon Ball movie, yeah. at least. So, but yeah, uh, that's why that happened. Uh, we, so we decided to do them as like one million and two million subscriber specials, respectively. You know, that says something, though, because we we did, like, three movies before, or three or four movies before we did our million subscriber. Then we did one or two movies before we did our two million subscriber. Exponential growth, man. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you all so much. And thank you all so much for watching us. What's up, man? These will be the last two before we show our uh, first thing. Hey, so I know you guys are super busy with everything you have going on, but your writing has improved so much over the years, and it's actually... Some would beg to differ. <laughs> uh, it's just actually, some would argue, like, the better way to experience Dragon Ball. Uh, but I was wondering if you guys thought about doing your original content? Like, purely original, I know... Final Stick Fantasy around for the second half of this uh, panel, and you might be surprised. Uh, also, are you guys thinking about doing, like, a Mystery Science Theater kind of thing, just in your characters? Uh, not in character, but we do have a full riff track for uh, Dragon Ball Evolution out there. It's on our website. Uh, 
if you go to our gameplay, like the like the quickest way to access it would be, I guess, go to our site and go to the podcast and find it. But if you want like a direct link, check out our gameplay channel. Check out our Dragon Ball Evolution PSP playthrough, which I think is finishing up like today or tomorrow. Uh, we have a link for the download right there in the description. Awesome. So. Thank you. Yeah, Thank no you. problem. Uh, hi, Lanny. I Yo. was wondering how you can sleep at night when uh, your one true son died because you were too busy having a casual conversation. On his own getting, birthday, of all things. While he was, Why are you bringing this up to me? While he was getting hit with Screech, lowering his defense two stages, allowing him to die. How Why are you bringing this up? Like, I, it was a freaking Arbok, okay? There was no <laughs> chance I was going to do it, but then he did it, goddammit! <laughs> the Nuzlocke was rough. He will not Very hard. Those of you who watched it understand. They will not Never forget! Never forget! Those of you who have not watched it will understand. <laughs> Never forget! May the love of steak bathe over you all. <laughs> Alright, nothing like a steak right, bath. What, what, what shall we lead with? Shall we lead with uh, episode 40 or 56 oh, clip? Well, or? Okay, crowd. Shall we start with a little, uh, little animated short? We have, a, we have a full animated short featuring Vegeta, and we have a uh, preview of episode 56. So, let's hear it. Vegeta short? Yeah. All right, all right. 56? Yeah! Oh, wow, the Vegeta short actually won. All right. I am a little surprised. <laughs> So this is Grand Theft Auto V, huh? It's not that impressive. I go outside and see this. It's a really shitty neighborhood now that I look at it. Just leave garbage on the streets. Who does that? The fuck are you looking at? Say something! What? What? Yeah, that's right, run! Coward! Oh, now we're doing it! Come on! Come on, put him up! Punch you in the fucking face! Do it again, I fucking dare you! Ah, <laughs> uh, they did it! Everyone else did it! Come here! Zach Manley, he's a great artist, great animator. He threw that together for us over the course of the last couple of months while like balancing his other work. Yeah, it, it, I was really, really happy with the final results on that one. Um, actually, the, uh, the side of the controller at the end, I literally just grabbed my PS4 uh, controller. Click, 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 click. It's a loud controller from like that angle. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to some cues for which we shall give some A. Let's go. So a couple of things first. The, the, I agree the writing has gotten better. I keep hearing my friend always saying, Oh, my pride! I wish I was a carrot! <laughs> <laughs> but it's such, such an amazing line. Like, you just expect it out of no. Mock my pride! <laughs> it's like a scene say. <laughs> but I also imagine that there might be a line about uh, Gohan dying while Trunks survives from Vegeta. What was that? Like, so, I imagine something gets written to like, because Gohan dies, Trunks comes back, so that's kind of like a one leg up that 
Go, uh, Vegeta has over Goku that Trunks survives over Gohan. <laughs> See, the thing is, like, they, like, Vegeta and Trunks haven't exactly had a heart to heart, so I don't think Trunks has actually told him a lot about what's happened in the future outside of, you know, everyone's dead. Yeah, I don't think Vegeta knows any details. I don't think he's ever tried. He's a really bad dad. <laughs> Just a At least he's there. He's still better than Goku. Prove me wrong! <laughs> Goku spends a majority of both of his children's lives dead by choice. <laughs> But anyways, my main question is, like, I, I know the one-offs are amazing, but will we ever see another full LP of Running It for Life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no worries. Like, I've, I've been trying to catch up on those, and, like, just, I know the one-offs are, like, everyone loves those, but, like, you know. They're a lot easier to produce. Yeah. Just, I will say that. Still love this, uh, there's poop in my soup. <laughs> <laughs> that was indeed poop in all of the soup. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, two for Vegeta. First, if you were able to become President of the United States, what would be the first thing you would do? Change the law that says nobody who was born here can't become president. Because, I mean, that's a weird loophole and all that, but still, I am an alien. I don't think I'm eligible. But the first thing, but the second thing I would do, Outlaw androids, just no way, no way. No. <laughs> Absolutely not, and nobody's to mock me. First Amendment, gone right away. Nobody mocks me unless I say so. I'd be very Trumpish. <laughs> Everyone has to get rid of your phones. Second, how do you feel knowing that you have technically won more death battles than Goku has? Oh. I know that I have won more than Kakarot, and I know that I shall continue to win more than Kakarot if I'm ever brought back, because I keep bringing him back, why did I bring back the loser? I can take down that Klingon, Kling, Kling, Klingtonian, whatever the hell it is. I don't know, he wears underpants outside of his clothes. Ooh, so spooky. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. you. Klingtonian. Klingtonian, what, what is it? I don't know, it's just some stupid alien. You know how many races I've killed? Last, last son of Klingon. <laughs> Hello, I'm um, Aaron, and um, I love your show, and y'all make me laugh every day while watching him. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, so here goes my question for this week. Um, what if, why all the uh, GBC characters be, like, sitting in a Master Walking House and watching a uh, Sign X show, and if it's, it, if it's the um, Sign itself transform with the Cal's Aaron White Simmer to the, uh, to the Saiyan transform, what would Fazia say to that part? Boy, this question went places. <laughs> First of all, I would say, what? <laughs> Second, I would say, the, and then I would say a word that I'm not allowed to say, because this is not 18 plus. <laughs> but it starts with the letter F. <laughs> And we used up both of those <laughs> in, in the review. You get, oh, yeah. you get two before you go above PG-13, and we just burned them. <laughs> Actually, it's one. Is, is it one? It's okay. one. We screwed it up. <laughs> no turning back. Okay. There's no easy way out. There's okay, no shortcut you. home. Anyway. <laughs> nice Pikachu shirt. Thank you. It's going to cute. I know. Um, I got two questions. One. You know the secret of making the Kamehameha. The secret to making a Kamehameha? Yep, I got a picture, so I want to see. As far as I was aware, all they had to do was just say the words, because, like, you know, that's. <laughs> man, Master Roshi spent his entire life making that technique, and then just, boop, Goku just replicates it instantly, so does Krillin. You know, the problem wasn't actually coming up with the technique, it was the name. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah, he needed to find the right chant. Actually, you need two hands. I can show y'all. Uh, yeah, you need to, yeah, that's right, the two, the two right hand picture. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Goku has, like, the... That, that was weird. Like, there's so many weird animation errors. But they're so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fun, fun story. Uh, for those who watch DFS Gaming, uh, Grant, his desktop at the office, all of the uh, stuff for the... Like, all of the... His desktop is basically all of the in-between bad animation frames from anime, and he just keeps adding to it. So if you ever find like a really bad in-between frame or a bad animation cell, 
just message it to uh, at Master WGS and he'll add it to his library. I just keep walking by that computer and seeing those things. It's just wow. It makes me, you know, he did it because he needed something that would always make him laugh. And yeah. You know what? It works. Super. Yeah, no, half of Super is on that thing already. <laughs> like, if, 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 if Toei had known about that desktop, it would have been copyright claimed and like shipped off to Japan by now. <laughs> That being said, they should start paying more attention in between frames. You know, just little things. Little, little things. I don't care about in between frames. I care about keyframes, and they're still trying to fix that. I know. Second question. I noticed Overwatch over there. What's your guys' favorite Overwatch characters? May. Yes! Yes! All right, and now for someone who's not garbage. Hey! Oh! Look, 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 listen. I'm a Roadhog player, so all of you may Dick. Oh man, Roadhog, so try hard, man. What am I gonna do? Oh wait, I'll just throw the hook and shoot him once. There we go. There. Oh, my God. My God. Someone's just salty about getting hooked all the time. I never get hooked. Well, and when I do, I can always just press a button and be invulnerable for a little bit. And then wall. Ah. You play Overwatch much yet? I don't play any video games. There we go. I just realized Donald Trump probably plays me. <laughs> what? She built a wall. <laughs> yeah, but she's the one who has to pay for it. <laughs> no, uh, that's uh, Reaper. No. <laughs> HBI, what's your favorite character to play? Not here. I'll answer for him. It's Mercy. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yo, uh, my question is last year at the King Four Star panel or the year before, you guys talked about doing a voiceover of Archer in uh, Helsing's voice. Has that been put in the works or? No. I think Taka just said. Uh, Taka just says Alucard. things sometimes. Yeah, no, Alucard's Alucard's like Alucard's 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 Alucard's
If you could be one of the racists from the game, what would you be, and what would your special attack name be? Well, everybody knows I made my lovely little granddaughter Puddin'. <laughs> and uh, she's still working on that Puddin' Pop. <laughs> and you got spuds. Uh, I'd say the freezer race, because they got horns and a giant tail. You just want to be like a, a metal god? Yes! I want to have the battle vest. I'd say damn it, but they don't have any... Yeah. Yeah. And they nerfed the giant one recently. They nerfed that they can't be giants anymore? No, they can be giants, but they like nerfed like the ability, I guess. I don't know how, but uh, well, apparently it's not nearly as good now. Well, yeah. shoot. How about you? What race would you be? Oh, I'd be Majin. Are you kidding? Uh, but you all, all you do is turn into Kid Boo. That's so boring. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not the point. I can shapeshift. That's fair. You can turn things into candy. There <laughs> you go. You want your uh, badge back? Your special attack, attack man. Yeah, oh, special yeah. attack oh, oh, special attack game. Oh, damn. Um... See, I had an easy one. I was able to shill our own easy. stuff, so it works. Uh, let's see. I would cycle through any Cannibal Corpse album cover and just pick <laughs> it right there and be like, You! We're not naming that. Okay, you were not naming that. Come on, there's too many. Hammer Smash Face, there we go. That's Hammer the, Smash Face. That's the best one we can use. That's the most PG one. I have no idea. Can't even make up a name. No. Ah, that's boring. Anyway, here. Aren't you on a panel that makes things? What's with the matter with you? That's why, that's why okay. there's All right, multiple listen, drafts. Listen. Last night was a very fun night. But a very long night. And this, today, this was a very early morning for me. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day, too. I'll give you that. Hey, Come take up, a your bed. Hey, um, I already know Ann Fish's answer to this from a couple months ago. Yeah. New Day or The Elite? Whoa. You're not familiar with I the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega? Oh, really? Yeah, not really. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. So I have to go New Day. If only that's because fair. Xavier Wood talked to me on Twitter, so I'm cool. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, they answered New Day a couple months ago anyways. Also, who would you rather have on your side in a back alley street fight? Lakeager or Tantor? Tantor. Tantor's like seven feet tall and 300 pounds. <laughs> and he's got Mr. Steak. <laughs> I love it. You know, after seeing his speedo, I've decided that my attack name is the Sausage Smuggler. <laughs> We're about halfway through the panel. Do we want to take a break and uh, watch the preview for uh, episode 56? Yeah! Everybody in the aisle wants to kneel down a little bit. Forgive me. <laughs> kneel before it's on. <laughs> and what's exciting about this? Fill it in yourselves, guys. Man, it feels like years since. You had a wig.
to prepare for your little tournament. It's so you can spend the last seven days on Earth playing that Mr. Satan wouldn't show up. So let my imagination be charged and drink my heat out. My heart is in love. I'm going to squash that good bird. So, do they know what's going on with his name, or...? on a few other people to show up before we uh, show off the, the, uh, the new thing. thing. The new thing. Oh, you guys are all leaving before we show off our special premiere trailer. Risky. Boo those people! It's okay, we love you. We have an autograph signing it too at our booth. <laughs> no, 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 they're getting in line. They're getting in line. Oh, okay, they're, they're smart. No. All right. Hello. Um, I have two questions. Um, one, my friend, he likes your show. He made himself an actual muffin button. Ah, uh, nice. Aww. Uh, and I wasn't asking you guys to sign, but autograph thing at 2 o'clock, so I'll just catch you guys there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And last question, when's Broly? It's being worked on right now, and you mispronounced it. It's when Broly. <laughs> What's that face? The answer is soon Broly. Perhaps Broly. next month, Broly. Oh. Under, said perhaps, don't hold me to that. Underline, underline, perhaps. Thank you. Bold. And then that there's an asterisk Broly. by it, and then that asterisk leads to a, another one that says, Lanny Pator is known to lie. <laughs> <laughs> when will the muffin button reappear? Uh, it depends on if we have any more spaceships, which I don't believe ever come up again. No. We're spaceships. It's all, no, part, no, it's all part of the Frieza tech. Like, we don't have any more of that. GT. GT. <laughs> also, what is all your favorite, like, alcoholic drinks? Favorite alcoholic drinks? My easiest go-to if it's not, like, straight scotch, it's uh, White Russian. Yeah. Dude, uh, um, because I'm a boring white dude, Moscow Mule. <laughs> It's, it's vodka, ginger beer, and a twist of lemon. Yep. Because uh, it has a kick. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, rum on the rocks. That's just my Caribbean blood kicking in right there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Give me a double. Give me a roadie. What's up? Hi. Um, Hi. So you were talking about how the hardest character to develop for you was Gohan. <laughs> Yeah, hardest one to write for, at least, and he, he's slowly becoming into his own. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, like, it's hard to develop him when, like, in scenes where he's not fighting or where he's not emotionally enraged, but in those moments when he is, like, the, from the very beginning, like, Vegeta and Nappa show up, like, I'm gonna rip out your intestines and use them as a condom to fornicate with your, your skull. skull. Yeah. Yeah. That was brilliant. Uh, go on to Nerd Rage, just some of the fun stuff. Jacket. He just hasn't had one in a long time. Yeah. yeah. But now, with... Where we are in the series now, with the Cell games coming up, we know Gohan's gonna flip his shit, and there's gonna be epic savagery, so... <laughs> epic savage snappagery? Is that what you said? Epic, epic savagery. I like snappagery. Oh, yes, yeah, so no, I, I am so excited because, yes, he will be savage. <laughs> we, are, we, are very, we are very excited to write the actual Cell games, and you know what? Coming soon. Episode 56 is going to be like the last one before the Cell Games, right? Yes, it is the last episode before the Cell Games. So keep those hashtags going. Hashtag Cell Games. I just had one more. I just had one more. Um, no. Hashtag. No. Hashtag. No. Hash. Tag. Be fired. <laughs> you can't fire me! It's true. Yeah. Alright, I had a question for Krill uh, Krillin. Yo! Uh, I wanted to get your take on the Cyclist for Justice movement writer. So, well, <laughs> as a fighter for justice myself, I always kind of dreamed of being a cop, you know. <laughs> I believe in what that man is fighting for, and he fights his hardest, damn it! And sometimes you need a big, strong, bold man to come and save you! 
you. <laughs> and that's something I can agree with. Thank you very much, Krillin. A uh, few quick questions, and one very personal question for Kaiser and Vegeta. Um, well, question one, have you ever considered like, branching out to other animes? Uh, we, we, uh, we tried tackling, you know, name redacted bridge. Uh, we, yeah. Uh, Helsing uh, Ultimate. Obviously we do well. Helsing Ultimate. You know, we try to get at least one out yearly. Um, but as opposed to that, we, we might eventually, but that's something that's uh, kind of taken a back burner to other projects that we currently have in the books. Okay. Uh, what would you say the IQ is of Goku? Uh, uh, what, what size is my shoe again? <laughs> Double that. Okay. I'd, I'd, say, I'd, say he's, I'd say he's at least above 50, but not, not that the IQ even means much. No, well, yeah, the whole IQ scale is kind of like outdated at this point. Yeah, it, it doesn't really mean much in terms of how intelligent you actually are. It's weird. Okay. Oh, by the way, if I could, I'd be fully fully abridged. <laughs> Okay, um, does Goku become smarter when he becomes Super Saiyan? We've been playing around with that, like, we just, like, for, for, yeah, I think, basically. Like, yeah, he becomes, he becomes more focused, he, that's yeah. the idea. Okay, um, now for a very personal Sorry, man, question. that's like two questions you've asked so far, so we're gonna move on. Sorry, dude. There's always the, uh, autographs. There's always the autographs, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can always ask for the autographs. Question for uh, all three of you: How much fun did you guys have when during April Fools and you fooled everyone? Thought the world of me was was happy on April Fools. How much fun did you all guys have with that? Honestly, uh, for uh, the video this man's referring to is the uh, Bridgemon, uh, Bridgemon the movie, <laughs> which uh, fun story all started because once Masako, uh, Little Karibo. Uh, X the Dark One, and I think Shady Box made a, a Bridgemon episode one, all thinking like, yeah, no, we, we're gonna like continue doing this. They never continued. But since they made episode one, like, like clockwork, every month we'd always get a couple of messages asking Team Four Star, who did not work on it, when's episode two? So eventually we got tired of it and we produced an episode two, popped it up on my channel as an April Fool's joke, and we did, like, the last episode of Digimon Adventures. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, a couple of years later, we're like, eh, whatever, we're gonna do a Bridgemon the movie, so uh, to celebrate the opening of our studio down in uh, Texas, we all got together, got a bunch of drinks, some pizzas, and scripted out that some bitch in about, <laughs> in about one night. It went through one. It went through one draft after that, but it was mostly. Yeah, there needed some refinement because of our drunken ramblings in the middle. <laughs> but we were happy with how it came out. We were really happy with the response. Honestly, it was way more positive than I ever thought it was going oh, to be. Oh yeah, especially when we put Broly as the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> I try to I try to tip people off by spelling Broly wrong, but a lot of people saw in the cast list that we put John Tron as Paragus. Oh, no, no, John Tron. Yeah, John Tron was Paragus. And Markiplier was Broly. <laughs> and people keep asking, is that the actual casting? And I'm like, I, I wish. Are you kidding? <laughs> those, those boys are busy. And, uh, one other question. Um, what, is, what is your favorite running joke in the series? Favorite running joke in the series? Hmm. That, that's difficult because we. That's hard one. because we've had several that were running and then stopped running. Yeah, I mean, at some point, at some point, a joke's gotta find its ending point uh, because, especially if it hits a high point. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, what, what was your for, for the longest time? It was the Kyo what? Kyo what? Yeah. Um, shoot, I'd have to think about that. Gosh, how many jokes do we have? That and like that and Doctor Brief being a fucking maniac. I just used the third one. Damn it! Now we're slight, we're teetering on our. Um, honestly, I have to say it's the Android count. The Android count was my favorite running joke. <laughs> Do you have a favorite running joke, Ant? Hmm. Dodge. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, mean, I did. I did. He's like not going to dodge the question, okay? <laughs> 
I did, yeah. I did like the Kyle once uh, ago. No, and, yeah, birds with Android 16. Like, don't oh. Get it. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I changed my answer. No, it's birds with Android 16. <laughs> that is not a bird. Oh, no, no. What is your favorite kind of bird? Uh, uh, oh, penguins. Wrong! <laughs> Actually, no, 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 it's not, it's not that, it's Killing Goku. Killing Goku is my favorite. Okay. Yeah. His obsession with murdering Goku. Absolutely. It's the fact that he says, not, the fact that he doesn't say kill Son Goku, he's like, I would like to murder Son Goku. <laughs> What's up, Matt? Thank you. Thanks for the uh, question, dude. So, uh, Daddy Lonnie, does yeah. Daddy Taka not love us anymore? That's my name, Lonnie. <laughs> it happens. I, it happens from time to time. I've heard every different type of pronunciation for my made-up word. Dad, don't stop fighting. Uh, yeah, uh, Taka hates everybody here, and that's why he's not here. And you can all let him know that. <laughs> yeah, we are all very heavily disappointed in him. At Takahata101 on Twitter, let him know how disappointed that you are. Okay. Oh, and a uh, serious question. What are your favorite uh, characters from the actual show? Piccolo. Mine is yeah. Piccolo. As opposed to your fake show. Fake show, yes. That is not a, that is not inaccurate. <laughs> actually, um, and it's entirely coincidental, it's actually Trunks. Um, I love Trunks' story, I love the fact that, you know, it's, it's one of the most convoluted, dark, interesting <laughs> stories, and his appearance really just changes the entire series after that. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I definitely have to say Trunks. Yeah, I just like Piccolo's whole character arc between, yeah. like, you know, being super evil, then being moderately evil, then <laughs> training Gohan and slowly finding a soul. Yeah, and really then finally he like ties it together with Kami in the end. Piccolo and Vegeta have some of the best character arcs in the entire series. Oh, they do. The anti-heroes are great. Oh yeah. Like like what you guys did with like making Piccolo like the dad. I was like, oh, oh there it is. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things in Super, is like when he's looking after little Pan, like little grandpa Piccolo, just like mm. <laughs> no, that is the, the, be, the best episode in Super, is literally just about Pan, and it's amazing. And it, it, oh god, Gra Uncle Piccolo. Yeah. Oh. No, it's Grandpa Piccolo. Yep. Piccolo, best parent. Oh yeah, no, it is. It's, it's basically Grandpa Piccolo. No, no, Grunkle Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you all, especially, especially you, Mr. Fredericks. <laughs> Okay, okay, first of all, no one puts a D in Ferrex except for my husband. <laughs> I like how you guys are ignoring the continuity with Goten's birth, but um, in The Adventures of Dumpling, I think it was Kaiser said, I have to Photoshop somebody out of the boo scene where it turns people into chocolate. Who were you talking about? Actually, no. I know what I'm going to do with that scene now, and no one has to actually be Photoshopped out anymore. Okay. All right, thank you. No problem. Worst dad in anime. Goku, Gendo Akari, or Shao Tucker? Look, that little girl really loved her dog, and they were inseparable, so now they are inseparable. I'm just saying, sometimes a wish goes too far. Look, look, I just, I have met many parents who are like, they just can't afford both a, a, ch a child and a pet. Can you imagine a little girl that you can just feed dog food, but then take her to school and... That way, when they get sick... You can take it to the vet, it's significantly cheaper. Or kill them. That's the way to get it. Then then you make another. <laughs> How dark can we bring this? <laughs> so, I, don't know, I don't know. I'd have to go with Show Tucker. Yeah, I think I'd it's agree. All, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I was wondering if you could come up with a better screen name for my Christian Mingle account, which happens to be... Hold on, what, what's, what's the name? Uh, my screen name is BallsDeep69. <laughs> you do? Okay, I got it. Underscore X. Uppercase X. Underscore X. Underscore 420. <laughs> BallsDeep69. 
that is. Asterisk air horn. Hmm, <laughs> thank you for that insight. <laughs> First off, Kaiser, does Fully Cooly really need a parody? <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't. Why does the word need have to show up? Yeah. <laughs> does anything need to exist? I, actually, with the Fully Cooly thing, my entire point would just be to, like, focus all on the softer moments. Like, that's what I really want to do. Because there's a lot in there that's just ripe for messing around with, but... And also... Are you guys ever going to uh, abridge the original Dragon Ball series? We've been tossing around ideas about that, but we... Thank you. <laughs> but we feel like uh, focusing on Z needs to be top priority right now, just because, you know, we need to keep up production on that. That being said, don't be surprised if we do come up with something for Dragon Ball in the future. Yeah, actually, one of the things that I'd really want to do, if we could, is uh, do the original sagas, like the Pilaf saga, the... Um, like, all as their own individual, like, little mini-movies or something? Yeah, I would absolutely love to do something like that. When we'll have the time to do something like that. And who would win in a fight, Dumplin' or Popo? What was that? Who would, who would win in a fight, Dumplin' or Popo? There's no fight, same person. Same person. <laughs> I forgot about that, sorry. Uh, how y'all doing? You doing all right? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, this question goes from Krillin. Uh, before part two comes out, can you do the same move for Outlands and we play part two? Um. Once Vegeta locks me in that shit again, I guess I'm gonna have to, probably. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do have every intention of playing through Outlast as Krillin. Because, um, what's, what's funny is because I played it myself, and I got my cousin watching you guys play it too, and I don't think you'd be able to survive in same mode, because scissor beams won't work, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, well, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I did not hear that last part. I said, um, I think you might need scissor beams, but it might not work, because in same mode, you won't survive at all. All right. Let's take it easy. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, man. For some reason, that microphone is really quiet. Is there a way to like boost it a little more? All right. What's up, man? Go well. Um, I had a berserker related question, but I guess that'll have to wait. Yeah, um, HBI's over at the booth now. All right. Well, two, one, second one's real quick. I promise. I'm gonna be in Toronto tomorrow, so I was wondering if any of you had like hot spots you'd recommend for the short amount of time I'll be there. In Toronto? Yeah. Kensington Market's fun if you're into new age, hippie, like <laughs> adults, Sesame Street, hot yeah. shops. <laughs> <laughs> and healing crystals, that's always a good time to laugh. By the way, I love your shirt. It's, oh. it's a good one. It's oh, a good thanks. One. It's, a, it's a freezer. Yeah. <laughs> I actually designed it myself. Nice. What? Yeah. T Public. Uh, T Public. I even managed to try to get all the different forces, even a nap and radish. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we can't see that from back here. That's so cool. There's also a second version where it's just a closed one where you see the whole yeah, the final one. form. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you guys want to see the full version, it should be on Deep Public or just look up more Freezer. Unfortunately, part. unfortunately, since you make Dragon Ball shirts and are directly in competition with us, uh, we must kill this man. <laughs> well, I had my highlight today anyway. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go with one more question, then we're going to premiere that special trailer we're going on about. Yeah, stay tuned. Will Puddin ever make an appearance in DBZA? Uh, it, it's very hard to say, but I doubt it because we like sticking to the continuity of our show. Yeah, um, when it comes to stuff like that, we don't want, like, it would be really difficult to have any of our uh, peripheral content. We don't want to alienate anybody who doesn't watch that stuff. All right, now everybody, if you guys in the aisle could, like, kneel down a little bit, because, uh, Get ready for some shit. And here we go. Living here stole our sense of fun, Chancellor. Aren't you the least bit curious as to what would happen if we decided to take it back?
uh, quick questions. Um, coming 2017, <laughs> not sure when yet, but we're gonna get it done. <laughs> 2017 is a, it's a flexible date. It is. <laughs> Uh, but know that we are tirelessly working, so um, I know that these two lines are probably up here to ask Lanny to say things in the Vegeta voice, but does... Vegeta, Vegeta voice, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Um, Very excited. We've been working with you guys. Like, I, I, I've been working back and forth with you. Kaiser's been helping you out with some things in this. He, I know he worked on like the UI and the. Yeah, unfortunately, we forgot to throw that in the credits, but uh, Kaiser did do the uh, the UI for the Hunter's Post, which was voiced by Chris Zito. Because I love Zito. So, um, are there any immediate questions about this madness that we're committing? Yeah, does anybody have. Uh, for those of you who are in line, do those in line have. The, but, 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 there we go. Questions about the uh, trailer. All right, that's, uh, All right, let's just pull you to the front. Around those two. Then, then we can then we can get back to actual four star shenanigans. <laughs> which you all lined up to see. Yeah, which uh, what you got, Matt? Okay, so question: Can you give us any general like background details? We see it's like a desert where they're at. Is that one area or kind of the whole uh, realm that they live in? Uh, it, it's kind of the whole realm that they live in. They they live on the lost planet of Zerasan, and it's got one supercontinent, which is mostly very arid, with a single rainy season each year. Um, it's kind of a mega cities situation, so there's just a lot of dead space in between all of those cities, and people scratching out a living in that dead space. Hello. I'm sorry if this is you, because I can't pin down most voice actors on, you know, physical sight. But was the purple-haired girl uh, voiced by the same person as Final Scratch and Little Pep? Yeah. Awesome. That's uh, Jesse Nowak. Yeah, uh, Nowak King, Jesse Nowak. She's uh, she's actually Sarah's Victoria in uh, our Helsing Ultimate Bridge. Um, she's a professional voice actress as well, has done a couple of uh, gigs up in New York. She's incredibly talented, and yes, she plays high mm -hmm. Cool. Yes, yes. Uh, for Mark, uh, what animation software did you use? Made in Blender. Damn. Uh, just a quick follow-up. Uh, are you relying on uh, motion capture, or are you doing this all? That was all keyframes. Damn. <laughs> we, do not, we do not have a motion capture stage. We, don't, we, don't have the, we do not have the space, the money, or the time to have a motion capture stage. So everything that you saw was 100% keyframes, no references, no keyframe data, no mocap no mo data, nothing. That was just From what I understand, you still want to do a little bit of polishing before this pops up on YouTube, yeah? Yeah, there, this, was, this, was a, uh, this was a 90 day, well, less than 90 day, because the, the Vanguard set didn't exist before we said, well, why don't we uh, try to put something together special for Yomacon? Woo! So. This was for you! This was all for you! And uh, not that he usually gets much sleep in otherwise, but I'm pretty sure for the last couple of weeks, if not the last month, he has sustained himself on nothing but cigarettes, caffeine, and spite. Yeah. <laughs> and confirmed. Yeah. The coffee flows strong in my house. Uh, next question? Uh, yeah, um, I actually had a just a general question. Yeah, no problem. Uh, two, actually. Um, since its inception, the abridging community has changed a lot. So, in your personal opinion, is it too late to get into abridging? I mean, I was interested in... It's never, honestly, it's never too late. All you have to do is just kind of sit down and decide you want to do it. It's one of the reasons that we actually held the TIBA competition is we have gotten, like, so far and been able to do so much just because of this little hobby that has now turned into basically what is mounting into a career. And... Yeah, and it's like the TV competition is just like our way of saying, you know, everybody can give a shot and we'll, you know, pump the name out there, we'll see like how many people stick and see where you can go from there. You wanted to add something? Uh, mine's a little more complicated. Uh, I love doing Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and uh, the whole abridging concept certainly has allowed us to be really creative, and, and we've worked within limitations, which has, you know, bred a lot of interesting new ideas. Um, but I will say this. 
Uh, it's totally cool if you want to abridge something. If you want to sit down and put the abridged name on it. But uh, let me tell you this. Comedy is an amazing tool for storytelling, for getting your life out there. It, it, it's wonderful. Don't limit yourself to one certain type of comedy. Like, if you want to do an abridged series, that's fine. But make sure you study what actual comedy is. Learn from the masters. And well, just do what you enjoy doing, really. I mean, it's, 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 it's partially about, you know, entertaining an audience. But the other part of it is making sure that you yourself feel creatively fulfilled. If you're doing something and you're not enjoying it, then what's the point? Yeah. But also remember that, you know, we got really lucky making a career out of what we do. It is not typical, and it's very difficult. So don't go into this thinking that you're going to, you know, don't go into it yeah, expecting to be up in front of a thousand people it, talking it's, about it. It's all about, like, it's, it's a lot of persistence, a lot of dedication, and of course the love and support of all the beautiful people like you out there that makes anything like what we're trying to do here possible. Yes. Honestly, we, this trailer would not exist were it not for all of you. So thank you so much. If I can just add to that. Ultimately, you have to be creating because it's something you enjoy. You have to be creating for yourself, or it's not going to be a good product. Absolutely. I mean, you need to, your heart needs to be in it, or people will be able to tell and they won't go for it. Thank you, I just, A bit of a more lighthearted question after that one. Uh, I, we all know your taste in anime, but what about Western animation? Uh, your favorite Western cartoons? Uh, God, that's hard, because uh, I really, really like Avatar. Yeah, Avatar is very um, and honestly, they, like, Steven Universe is way high up on my list there. I still need to catch up on all that. Like, I'm still back in season one. Oh, wow. It's really good, but I just don't have the time to binge watch so many things while I'm trying to do all this other stuff. I gotcha. How about you guys? Do you have any, like, favorite Western animations? Uh, I'm, I'm straight Steven Universe right now. <laughs> I've uh, recently got into uh, Gravity Falls, so... Transformers. Woo! Thank you. Also, Gumball. Gumball's really good. Yeah. He said Gumball. Yeah, Gumball. Yeah, Gumball's great. The regular show is good. Hey. Alright. Hey, what's up, Dark Lord of the Sith? I'm actually a great guy, but besides that, I'm... I got my own things. <laughs> but... Not only am I an incredibly huge fan of Team Four Star and Lil Creepo, I've watched every single episode and movie of not only Helsing Ultimate, but DBC Abridged. Two questions. One, how far are you, how far are you, are you thinking of doing, like how far long are you going to do uh, Dragon Ball Z Abridged? Because you're already at the Cell Kings part. Are you going to do any further than that? We, at, at the moment, we fully intend on going through Boo. Uh, how far it goes after that is entirely dependent on a lot of things, frankly. Second question. Are you, are you gonna continue with Helsing Ultimate Bridge? Cause I really enjoy that. Don't worry, it's coming. Cool. Oh, one more thing. Bane for date. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Um, how would a game of chess go between Goku and Vegeta? Especially if it would end in a lot of explosions. <laughs> yeah, especially if they were never explained the rules. You know what? You know what would happen if somehow, somehow, Goku could actually pin down the rules to play chess. He would win. And you know why? It's the same Chinese, uh, uh, it, there's a Chinese word for this, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's basically their idea of dumb beginner's luck, where somebody is so dumb and so new to the game that they make decisions that pros don't expect, throws them off, and then the pro loses. And that is why it would end in explosions. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, for Mark and Bennett, um, it's fantastic to finally see some materialization of the project, but now that it's sort of announced, is Toolshed ever coming back? 
<laughs> wow, you listen to Tool Shed. Um, <laughs> for, those, for those that don't know, a Sewer Tool Shed has, has been a nice podcast that we, that we were doing right up until we got super busy with this, and we're saying, like, oh, we got a secret project, we can't talk about it right now. It's a whole steady. Um, for like two years. Yeah, the shed will eventually reopen. It's, but you see why. No, I do. <laughs> Great. I'm glad to see But I miss you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, the, the shed will reopen by the end of the year. Thank you. Okay, um, so in the, um, Head Chilla, the theme song to Dragon Ball Z, have you ever noticed at the end where he's like, Hey-choo! And it sounds like he just sneezed and he just played it off like he was in the song. <laughs> Are you referring to the part? He's like, ha! I, 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 he says sparking. That's, that's really, isn't that actually a splice of two different parts of the song from you? No. <laughs> Shut up, Ayn. Okay. <laughs> Misheard lyrics. Let's chop it up to that. Thank you. So in that trailer that we just watched, was that Barrett? In throwing somebody out that, of the car? That was someone legally discernible from Barrett. Uh, <laughs> Not all one-armed black men are the same! <laughs> Dude, you can't get away with that in Detroit. Jesus! <laughs> Thank you that, 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 that wonderful bar, bar owner slash bouncer, his name is uh, Barry. <laughs> uh, he, he, he works with a very talented woman named Tina. And, uh, Sure, and you couldn't, see him, you couldn't see him because uh, he, he was kind of in the back and out of the view of the camera, but their, their friend, Klaus, who, who's, always, <laughs> <laughs> who's always hanging out. They have a pet dog named Red Seven. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. You yeah. totally had me fooled. Great, yeah. great. Uh, yes, and that's, that's what we will say in court. <laughs> Hello again. Okay. First, I will feel uh, two questions. The first one, I will feel silly if you have answered this in the show. I've been doing other stuff lately. What is Krillin's favorite bird other than ducks? Because, you know, they save his life uh, on a regular basis. I'm partial to the canary! <laughs> Why? Because you act as a canary? Yeah, it's, it's, there's reasons. <laughs> something, about, something about tiny birds with big heads. I just... <laughs> It, it speaks to me. <laughs> well, and uh, miners would use canaries to help them with bad air because they would die first. That's also accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second question. Why would using that word get you a R rating when... You know, I honestly don't know. When that... I honestly don't know how like the like MSRB really works or whatever like mo motion picture M MPAA MPAA. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how their like categories work. I've seen a few documentaries on how shitty a process they go through and how varied it is. It's completely arbitrary. At the moment, yeah. you can get away with one one F word, one F bomb in a PG-13 movie anymore, and it's automatically an R rating. Uh, and I find that dumb because you can have extreme violence in PG-13, but if someone says fuck, then... Oh. Yeah. Oops. What's more, what's more, it can't be an F word in a sexual context. Yes. You can't say, I'm going to F you, but you can say, I'm going to have F and sex with you. Yes, it has to be. And I think there's something also about the part of speech. It has to be a particular way you're using it in the sentence. It's complicated and dumb. That's, that's, that's generally. Those Jarens are gonna get you, man. Actually, actually, oh, um, does anyone remember the movie Bulletproof Monk? Yes! There is a scene with the Funk Master. Okay, so I don't know what they were thinking they could get away with. They weren't thinking a lot in that movie. No, the, I actually watched the like or the leaked copy of that movie. You can't see it because they intentionally blur his chest just enough. It's not. And that is not what he's. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, it is not Funk Master, and that is not what he says in the original version. <laughs> So <laughs> William Scott was the biggest thing, and then he wasn't. Uh, <laughs> was it the rundown that killed his career? Because that movie was actually not bad. 
Uh, I think it was the fact that he was Sean William Scott that killed this cool guy. He was Stifler! Yeah, Come he's, on. he's always gonna be Stifler. Yeah, he couldn't escape it. It sounds to me like you can use the F word as either an expletive or an adjective, but not as a verb. Yeah. But I just thought it was so weird since this is a Team Four Star panel that you can use. Well, the 18 Plus panel was last night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sorry. It's, it's, it's actually more of a convention rule, although we've blown that now. Holy <laughs> crap. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, John, you know, John St. John that was up. Hold on. There you go. Here. Oh, okay. You know what? I found the way to hold it. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Two abridged questions. First, what was the original inspiration for having both Nail and Kami stick around in Piccolo's head after the fusing? It, it just seemed like a fun idea, uh, especially for, like, originally it was Nail, but then we had to decide, like, well, I mean, he's going to do it with Kami, so do we go the whole nine yards? And yes, we did, and it was the best and decision we ever made. It works out really well because Piccolo spends so much time alone, and to me, this is what, like, it's kind of like what we did with Ghost Nappa, done properly. <laughs> okay. Um, my second question was: uh, You guys mentioned, have mentioned in previous interviews that Vegeta's voice came from practicing on a DBZ fight game. Correct. Where did the other voices come from? The other character voices? Yeah, where did Shaggy come from? <laughs> First of all, Roman is not Shaggy. <laughs> The voice that I based it off of, which was my Yu Yu Hakusho British Koenma voice, like, dude, hey there, uh, Zoinks, hey Scoob! Uh, that's what I was doing, and I just took the gruffness away. Like, if you take the gruffness away from that, then you just got this. And it just gotta work for Krillin! I don't know why! As for Piccolo, that was also, it started out as an impression of Sabbath, but then it just kinda turned into its own thing. You know, it's kind of funny, um, almost every character that I play is an imitation of the original voice, with the exception of Oolong. Oolong is actually an imitation of an old Harmony Gold dub. So the original, original. Yeah, from way back in the day. Where well, he talked by this. Hey, Lita. News on cool. the march. Yeah, it, they, first of all, in this dub, um, Bulma was called Lita. Uh, Krillin was called Bongo. And Americanization! Goku was Zero. <laughs> and Corrin was Whiskers the Wonder Cat. Whiskers <laughs> the I am not kidding. I thought that was That's actually where that joke came from. Which is where that joke came from. So, yeah, that's why I got going along. What's up, Sanic? <laughs> Thank you. Two questions. Whoa, whoa, slow oh, down. Sorry. <laughs> Way past cool. <laughs> okay. Um, two, two questions. For, um, Piccolo, do you find Piccolo more a power figure to, um, to go home more than um, Goku? Oh, absolutely. Okay. No, Piccolo raised that boy. <laughs> okay, another question. How long does it take you to finish up in, um, a brief series for each episode? It, it, honestly, it depends wildly on the scripting process and how long each script is. Yeah, um, and not to mention, editing an episode can take anywhere between 40 to 60 hours, and the movie can take anywhere between 60, 80, sometimes 100. Um, movie 2, uh, oh my god, that was, not, that was our longest movie, and that probably took me somewhere around 100 hours to finish. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. By the way, that's working hours, not continuous. Whoa. <laughs> Mostly not continuous. <laughs> now, for the trailer we just saw, what's the theme behind it from the 90s Cartoon Network TV show reboot? No, but I've been hearing that a lot from the people who kind of preemptively saw it. I think it's just in the way that I animate it, and sometimes the characters get a little bit floppy, and it's combined with that and the fact that we decided to go with individual teeth as opposed to the fused teeth look of it. Um, <clears throat> so, while it's really flattering, and while I very much love Reboot, uh, no, that, that wasn't really the, the inspiration behind it. It, it came from um, Bennett and I having not seen a space western in a while, and you know, we, we both love westerns, we love space westerns, and Firefly, and All Star, and, and b Trigun. And like that. Trigun, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, that's, that's kind of where it came from, was that, was that kind of wanted to 
Well, we love we love Mad Max and Outlaw Star and, and Bebop and Trigon. Let's make that. Yeah, because I thought it was kind of funny. I'm like, oh, I know what that's from. I just can't think of it. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, the animation is, is in some ways it reminds me of what we've done so far. Yeah. Which is deeply flattering. Thank you. Thank you. First off, hi Bennett. Hey. Big fan of Anime Abandoned. Oh, thank you. Oh, duck. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know... In, in, in the good way. Not bad. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I have a review show where I talk about older anime, and sometimes I'm not kind. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Thank you, Ben. Uh, what's your question? Well, first off, I'm not going to throw a shoe at you for, like, ruining, uh... What was it, Violence Jack? <laughs> oh. Like I said, Duck. <laughs> <laughs> also, is uh, the, sto the story in there, is, that, is there going to be like a bounty hunter of like the week that's going to chase them, or is there going to be an overarching story? Uh, the, the entire series is an arcing story. There is going to be an entire theme, a resolution from beginning to end, but uh, from, an, in, from an episode to episode basis, there is going to be that's going to be put on the back burner because something more present is happening in the episode. So while the main narrative is driving the characters forward, every once in a while something gets in, uh, presents themselves and causes trouble for the characters. So in a way, I guess you could say that a bounty hunter might show up and cause trouble, but that's not going to be the, you know, that, that happened this episode, it's going to happen next episode, and next episode, and next episode, so. Okay, thank you. No, no, there's no such thing as Team Rocket with our gopers. Bob A. Feet. Hi, Lanny. Yesterday I saw you wearing a Lakeager shirt. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if you were ever going to make a Tantor or Mr. Steak shirt. I am in the process of designing something. Man, you... Yeah, I actually have a... It's a big fly. Yeah, no, that's a giant fly. What do you think? I'm freaking out. <laughs> look, look, that found it. Uh, yeah, I am working on it. I am working on a Tantor and Mr. Steak shirt. Ah! Man, I... <laughs> yeah, so do I. Yeah. Oh, oh me. Hi. Uh, My time to calls! <laughs> By the way, guys, we will be having an autograph signing at 2 at our booth. Yeah. Alright, peace! A big fan of DBZ Bridge, Team 4 Star, been a subscriber since it was four digits. So, uh, that. Big fan of Anime Abandoned. Love Thank that you. Thank you. Um, I guess my main question is, if, if you had to compare your new show to the Don't current say. show, hmm? give like a, I guess, would, what would you, how, well, I'm guessing I'm going to rephrase, how would you describe your new show to somebody? Yeah, if you had if you had to give an elevator pitch, what you what, what would right. you call it? Like, what, how would you describe? I guess that's what I know. Mega Man, Mad Max, and the Wizard of Oz. Oh yeah, Ooh, there you go. sounds wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm still in shock that you said you animated this without motion capture, but I forgot to ask, how do you say the full name of this new project? The Chronicles of Zarasan, Diesel Dust. And is Marksman going to be at the same autograph panel as you guys? I could be there. I'll be around. <laughs> I'll be around. Just, just kind of looking around, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> My question is about the Krillin own count. I don't know if some. Oh knows. boy! <laughs> the thing is, I'm sure that 99.9% .9 of the people in this room knows what happens between Krillin and Android 18. And as a result, do you think that Krillin may get a deduction from that count? I don't want to spoil anything. I never, I, we, here's the thing. If you ask questions about anything coming up, mom's the word. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, going to the, I guess I can say what the, or at least what part of the title is publicly. Like the, Okay, for the Diesel uh, series, like for the trailer, what what was probably like in like making it was probably like the most challenging or difficult. Like, was it with the uh, environments or the characters to be modeled or to actually move or uh, like, mixing like? I would say starting was the hardest part. Not knowing how to do any of that three years ago was the hardest part, having no 
predisposal to 3D modeling or animation or anything, and then just like, let's just haul off and make a show. You know, the new Max Steel looks kind of like that, and so does Ruby. You know, like that's, and that was, like, and, and that was pretty much all it took for me to go, like, well, we're, like, can we do Anime Abandoned forever? Can we do, no. So there had to be a next thing. Um, as far as like what takes the longest in production now, it's it's environmental design and modeling. Like, uh, like Aaron, how long does it take for you to design an environment? That depends on the kind of environment it is. Um, generally, I'm a lot better with organic stuff, you know, like trees, mountains, rocks. But because it's in a lot of it is going to be like you know urban and towns and buildings. It takes a bit longer because that's something I'm still kind of learning, but I don't have to time myself because I honestly have never really, like, oh, I'm going to see exactly how long this takes, but I'd say probably a few days, not like continuously, but several hours. Also, rendering, I'm surprised you didn't say that. Well, see, like, <laughs> like, like, rendering is a drop in the bucket. Like, uh, like at the end of the day, like, rendering is always going to be a drop in the bucket. Like, it took just to render the fifth scene of that trailer, it took 12 hours um, of continuous rendering on three GTX 980 Ti's. Yeah. Um, but building everything, that's what takes the longest. You know, like we build into what's called the war chest, so everything that we build, we only have to build once, which is great, but everything still has to get built once. Cadence, like Cadence, Riley, Huxley, Cadence's weapon, all the special effects, you know, like there, there is no immediate toggle for any of those things in Blender or Maya or, or 3ds Max. All of that stuff has to get made, and making all of that stuff physically is what takes the longest. And after that, animating it is super easy. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this might not be the best question with like five minutes to go on the panel, as I'm sure there's no simple answer to it, but. With uh, diesel dust upcoming and uh, like the rest of you guys talking about a lot of original content, I've noticed that uh, a lot of people in like the abridging community and like uh, from Bennett's standpoint, the reviewing community, the Let's Play community, a lot of you are moving to more towards original content as opposed to content that relies on pre-existing things. Do you think that that is going to ultimately become the main method of producing content online. Absolutely not. I think that there will always be room for the kind of content that we have been creating. But the fact is, once you get to a certain point and you need to decide, like, hey, I need something. Okay, I need something of my own to kind of put out. I need something of my own to put out there because at, at a certain point, using other people's material, it all of a sudden, like, it, it's, it's first of all, legally very gray. Second of all, no money in it. <laughs> so you, you kind of have to decide at that point in your career, how do I move forward and where, like, in, in what way am I going to move forward? Because, like, while reviewing, as of right now, like, until, I don't know, Hollywood decides to lobby Congress again for all of that fun stuff, it's, it's all very much kind of, it, it feels like you're in this bubble, and you don't know if and when that bubble is going to pop, and all of a sudden everything you're working on means nothing. So you kind of need, like, a bit of a safety net, so to speak, and for most people, that safety net is creating their own thing and being able to have it and say, nobody can take this from me. And the moving on is also important because uh, there will always be a next generation of new media people to make the next awesome thing abridged or the next awesome Let's Play, and that's fine. You know, when, when Bennett and I stop doing Anime Abandoned one day, there will be somebody who maybe watched Anime Abandoned and said, well, Mark and, and, and Ben, you know, they, they missed all of this really old anime. So that's going to be, you know, like anime abandoned the next generation, and that's and that's fine. Godspeed. Um, like we need to be able to to move upward so that way that we can create that negative space so that someone else can fill that space and generate their audience, and it'll just keep going. Yeah, I started Yu Yu Hakusho abridged when I was 18. That's almost 10 years ago now, and uh, from there to like say you know 10 years into the future. Where do, you, where do I think I would be? 
this isn't it. I thought I'd be doing something like stupid nine to five, but no, thanks to all of you out here and everybody on the internet watching, we're able to basically live kind of a dream of being able to do, like produce the kind of content that we want to produce. And to that, honestly, I thank all of you because this would not be possible without you. Detroit Eastside all day. Um, so the whole panel, Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse? Real talk. Oh, Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> if Bugs Bunny had a Twitter though, uh. oh. Disney has me by the nuts, so it's Mickey. <laughs> I have always been a DreamWorks girl, so Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Thank you. Why didn't you say Shrek? That's what I just said. Not that way, but if it's gonna be a DreamWorks character, it's gonna be Jack Frost. <laughs> Bias. What's up, Piccolo? Hey. So, what Uber car do you drive? A Dodge. Uh, uh, <laughs> first time. First time. So, my question is uh, back in the day, you did a lot of the Christmas songs, like, completely. So I was wondering if you're ever gonna have like a complete the like the Dodge song or the Android 13 uh, fiddle song, you know? Uh, the Android title. 13 fiddle song is complete. It's actually all it's, uploaded. Yeah. No, it's well, it's not. It well, it's the TV. It's the TV size. Ah, uh, the TV yeah, it's cut. Close to the TV. Why size. would you post the TV cut? Because we didn't have a, we didn't have the whole three. Then you wait. I I didn't know you wanted me to be one, but. Uh, no, that, the fiddler in that, uh, Ryan Dricky, who is fantastic, and you should look him up, uh, was, you know, he is extremely helpful, he is also extremely busy, and I was very lucky to get him when I did. Uh, so, I want to wait until we can definitely get him back on the, for a full version of it, before I do anything like that. Yeah, we do intend to do uh, full versions of some of our songs. Dodge Bitch, probably not yeah. at this point. Yeah. First of all, Move Bitch was a very old song when we did that. <laughs> uh, second of all, it's a very old joke now, so it probably wouldn't fly with... Uh, like, I'm sure... Ludacris is eternal, Lanny. What? Ludacris is eternal. Luda, Luda is eternal. His songs, not so much. <laughs> And that's uh, unfortunately it. I think that's about it. Thank you so much, Yomakon, for having us. We will see.